Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to talk about change data capture. But before, remember, in the previous video, we have implemented the outbox pattern or transactional outbox pattern. So I have here some very nice information that can help you to, uh, for example, keep going with this example. For example, here we are publishing events. So we have all those events in our outbox table. So once you deliver or you send the event to Apache Kafka successfully, you mark the event as delivered. So you should, for example, think about how you are going to deal when you have those information that you don't need anymore. So in that order, I would like to tell you guys that, for example, don't forget to create some kind of clean, okay, like housekeeper in order to clean the outbox messages that we have sent already. Okay, because this table, the outbox table that we have here will grow fast. Another thing that I would like to tell you guys is, for example, as we are dealing with producer and particularly in production, you will have multiple instances of this application. So in order to avoid two different instances of this application sending the same event, okay, or in order to avoid some kind of race condition, you can implement a lock, okay? You can use, for example, uh, something like shared lock or other distributed lock. I will create another video that will talk about distributed lock and locks and so on. Okay, but for today's video, I would like to tell you guys that I have provided here also some other examples. For example, for example, you can implement the transactional outbox pattern without using the scheduler. For example, here we have the scheduler, right? We can use it uh, like just using the pure Spring Cloud function like Spring Cloud Stream and Spring Cloud Function by creating this way. Just creating your supplier and the bin, okay? And it will do the same as we are doing here with the schedule, okay? The only thing that you need to do when you are dealing with this approach, when you are using this approach, is you just need, for example, to configure the same thing, like, for example, fixed delay. In our case, it's 6,000 um, uh, milliseconds, okay? And so on. The other thing that I have done here also was, for example, if you want to use the, let's say, non-blocking reactive way. So I have provided here also an example. It, it looks the same, okay, as the previous one, but the only difference is when you are using web flags and reactive, all those stuffs, okay, you need actually to create a pullable bin, okay? So the difference here will be here, we have a bin, right? This is a bin, and here we are going to have a pullable bin. So if you want to understand really well the difference between those two, okay, just think about something. One is reactive and another one is not reactive, okay? And in the official documentation of Spring Cloud Stream, you have all this information. Just go and read. So having that, now let's move to our topic, which is change data capture. Let's go. So let's get straight to the point. Change data capture is like having a system that watches your database and takes note of any changes like insert, update, or even deleting data. So we are just talking about data manipulation language and data definition language. So as a result, we can use this information to keep other systems up to date, ensuring that they have always the latest data. Okay, and we we can think like we use uh, we often use. Um, the change data capture to move data between databases or system. So let's take a look, for example, the ETL, extract, transform, and load. Let's forget about the transform. So we can have, let's suppose, data in our Postgres, MySQL, or MongoDB. And if we want to move this data to Kafka, we can use Kafka Connect. Kafka Connect will extract the data from our source system in our case is Postgres, let's suppose, and we'll move this data to Apache Kafka. And the other side, we can also use Kafka Connect in order to load the data from Apache Kafka to other system. So this is the first thing that we can think when we are planning to use the Kafka Connect. So when we talk about the Kafka Connect, we will find different connectors and it depends on the uh, it depends on the provider okay so i think the best provider here right now is the confluent ecosystem because confluent is uh, let's suppose they are the owner of apache kafka okay 
but for this particular video we are going to use Debezium. Debezium is an open source project which does the same. So it works for example for database, change data capture for Apache Kafka. So we are going to use for example we have our microservice, remember guys our customer microservice, we have outbox table, we are going to use Debezium Kafka connector in order to capture data that we are persisting on outbox table and send this data to Apache Kafka. So let's go to the code. So we are going to use Docker Compose, okay? So be sure that you have Docker installed in your machine. There are some images that we need in order to create our containers. So as always, the first thing that we need is the Zookeeper and we also need Apache Kafka. And we are using AKHQ as our Kafka UI. And also we are using the schema registry. We need MySQL. MySQL is the database vendor that we are using in order to persist our outbox messages. Now we need a way that will allow us to capture all those events, all those changes that we are persisting in our table. What we are trying to do here is we are trying to avoid this kind of implementation here. So that's why we are using here the Bezium. Okay, so you can see the image is the Bezium connect. It depends on Kafka schema registry and also MySQL because we are going to use the vision to capture data from MySQL okay, to Apache Kafka. And as additional, let's say a bonus, we can use also the vision UI. So the vision UI, as the name speaks for itself, is just a UI that can help us to manage, for example, our connectors, configure, delete, and so on. Okay. So this is what we need. I will share with you guys the Docker uh, Compose. In order to allow the vision to get the changes from our table, we actually need to grant some privileges and we need to grant some access, okay? The vision should have, uh, not, not only the vision, but we should uh, say, okay, MySQL, our MySQL server, okay, should grant some accesses for our user, the user that we are going to use in the vision. But first, let's go, let's see what we need to do in order to create our first Kafka Connect. The first thing that I want to do is I'm just going to start all those containers. So let's start those containers. It's creating all the containers. So now that we have here our containers running, uh, let me just check if I have everything that I want. So you can use, for example, the the, the, uh, the Docker for desktop, but for me, I like to use the uh, Portainer, which is very nice UI for managing your containers, okay, and image and Docker and so on. So I have here my Portainer. Let me just see if I have those containers that we need. So we have the Debezium UI, we have the AKHQ, which is our Kafka UI. We have the Debezium also. Okay, okay, that's 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 nice. So let's go back here on our Docker Compose. And as we can see, the, the, the vision is running on the port 8083. So uh, the first thing that we, uh, that we can do is, for example, we can check if the vision is running, okay? So for example, we can just go to localhost, right? Uh, 8083, and we can see, okay, the division is running. So. Now we can start creating our, let's say, connector. Remember, the vision um, is, is the project, right? The, the vision have some connector. So the connectors you should install, okay? In order to see, for example, which connectors um, we, we have, okay? We can just, for example, see like this, okay? We can just get connectors. We don't have any connector installed yet because we are going to install. And in order to see which plugins we have, we actually just need to, for example, uh, get the plugins like this. Actually, uh, we cannot see it very well. So I'm just going to copy this and let's just use the, let's say the postman. Okay. And let's run. Nice. And now we can see all the plugins that we have pre-installed by using the Bezium. So we have DB2, we have MongoDB, we have MySQL, and actually we, we need MySQL, right? Because we are going to use the MySQL in order to capture data from our Outbox table to our, let's say, Kafka topic. Now that we have it like that, the next thing that we need is we just need to configure MySQL connector in order to capture 
let's say, the data from our outbox table to Kafka. So we are going to take the data that we are going to persist in this table and the division will take this data, will capture this data and send it to Kafka instead of using, for example, uh, let's say our custom implementation because this video we are using the vision change data capture in order to avoid using this kind of implementation let's just for example comment this let's start configuring our division so in order to configure the division uh, we can just for example go here the official documentation and we will see that uh, the first thing that we need to do is we need uh, to create a MySQL user okay account so this account should have, for example, the permission, all those permissions and privileges in order to allow the division connector to effectively to do the change data capture. So the first thing that you need to do, you just need to copy this command here. OK, of course, changing accordingly to your, your username and password. In my case, I'm just using like username and password is root and so on. OK, so like this. So these three steps. OK. In my case, I, I already have done this, okay? So I don't think that I need to repeat it, okay? But just do it. Now let's go to the configuration of my SQL connector to Debezium, okay, itself. So in order to configure the Debezium connector for my SQL, we just need, for example, to go here in the official documentation and copy this request here, okay? It's very simple, so let's go. So as we can see, guys, here I have, okay, I've just, I'm just following the same thing that they have done here. The documentation is very nice and you can later read each step, okay, here. But in our case, let's just say that, okay, we have the name of our MySQL connector. In our case, I just put the outbox connector because I'm connecting, I'm trying to extract the messages or the data from outbox table, okay. Then we have here the connector class. In our case is MySQL. For example, in your case, can be Postgres or something like that, or MongoDB, DB2, and so on, okay? Then we have the database host, we have the port, the username, the password, the server ID, okay? Just, just see uh, how can you get the server ID. I think it's not required. And then we start thinking here. So the database include lists, so we can include more than one database, but in our case, if we go back here, Okay, we can see that we are using actually the customer database. The customer database is the database that we have the outbox message. So having it like that, here we can see, okay, the customer is the database and the table that I'm including here is only the outbox message, okay? And then we set as you can see here, okay, the topic prefix, okay? So for example, if our topic will be outbox, if our topic will be customer or inventory, other thing, okay, or sales. So it will be, for example, here, Kafka that connect that sales. Okay, so the name of our topic, right? And the next thing that we did here, okay, is just, okay, saying, okay, now the internal Kafka topic, okay, that will uh, actually save the, the history, okay, will be this. Okay, so schema that history that uh, customer, and then we just set okay the bootstrap server for Apache Kafka, right? So having it like that, now I think we can start. We set okay, we create. Now, if you are someone like me, I'm just going to see the logs. So we can see here in the logs in the Visium, no exception, nothing uh, bad, okay. Now the next thing, I think we need to go here on our AKHQ okay, and let's see what we have here. Wow. So what we have here, we have here Kafka connect, right? If we take a look here, we will see that here we have some metadata, okay? So it's the division that actually is capturing everything that we have in our bin log let's say that my sql being logged okay and it's it's saving here in kafka okay so we can back it later okay as we can see it will we we have created our table our database and so on so the vision will have it here so the next thing that we can see here is that uh, we can we have here the kafka that connects that 
customer that outbox message. So remember that we had some messages, okay, some, uh, let's say, records here on our outbox table. So if we run it, okay, we can see that we have five records, okay? So we have here some, some, some names. So uh, once we run the, the Bison connector, okay, once we create, as we have done here, it will automatically start capturing all the changes that we have on our database, which is customer, and our table uh, outbox message. So that's why uh, if we take a look here, we will see that we have this structure. Okay, so the structure, we have some uh, more, let's say, like uh, some um, information more for the vision, but actually what we are trying to see here is the payload. So in the payload, we will see that we have here, let's suppose here, a event type, which is customer created. Okay, the first name is Pepe, the last name is Ozima, and so on. Okay, so if we create, let's say, let's go back here, okay, we have five uh, events here now. So if we, for example, create here a new customer, Steve Austin, okay. Now, if we take a look here, let's go. Now we have six, okay. Now we have six events. And if we look for newest, okay, we will see that we have here, for example, let's see, yeah, customer, customer created the name okay the first name is Steve the last name is Austin okay so actually this message here okay is like that because the way that we are persisting okay in our uh, let's say database so if we take a look once again here we are persisting the payload okay we are persisting as JSON okay if we take a look once again here right when we write the, the the payload okay the payload actually is a JSON so far so good guys but let's suppose that we don't need all this let's say structure here right so as you can see it's a mess the key the value there are some information that we don't need and also uh, let's suppose that we don't need this kind of topic like that okay so if you take a look for example here in the official documentation you will see that we have some transformations so we can use the transform transformers in order to transform anything that we have in our let's say uh, Kafka connect so in that order I'm just going to use a new transformer that will allow us to drop okay the topic name prefix or something like that